Yeah, so this is our second session, and uh, actually we're going to end with a small group discussion right after session, so there's no uh, praise, or so it'll end with a small group discussion. So, um, yeah, so a blessed to be here always, be in the same room with all the Sunjangs, because I know how much faith and heart you pour into uh, to disciple your Sunans, and, I, and I'm so blessed always to be part of uh, the summit and and then have this time together okay so um well if we can get the slides up okay first so the this session we're going to go over modeling okay modeling uh and can we actually read uh first corinthians 11 1 together uh ready go amen okay so actually this one verse, I think it describes what Christian modeling is. And this is the life that, as a Sunjang, that we need to live out for our Sunans. That if, you, if you can say what Paul has said to his Sunans, the, the people that he is discipling, people that he is helping them to really grow from spiritual infancy to a mature a saints in Christ, right? And this is what he says, he said, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Be imitators of me. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. This is, right? This is what we are called to do. And not just one uh, aspect of our life. In every, if we can say in every aspect of our life, spiritual and academic and relationships and like be able to tell your sunans. How, how many of you guys can say that to your sunans? Be imitators of me as I imitate Christ. Okay, everybody should be able to say this, but this is a daunting task, right? And, and therefore, this is what... Uh, we need, we need to have a great model of what uh, a Sunjang, uh, the life of Sunjang should be. So we're going to go over that, okay? Um, let me ask you this question then, okay? Um, who is responsible for the growth of our Sunans? Okay, first, Sunjangs. Second, no, number two, God. And third, Sunans. So, who is responsible for the growth of Sunan? Sunjang, God, and Sunan. Okay, so number one, who do you say? Like who the, the responsibility for the growth of the Sunan is number one, who say um, is Sunjang? Okay, number two, God. Oh, a lot of hands. Okay, number three, Sunan. Okay, we have one, okay. Awesome. Okay. I like that. You give the responsibility to the, the Sunan. <laughs> right? I like that. I like that, Aaron. Um, but guess what? All three is 100% responsible for the growth of Sunan. Okay? So as a Sunjang, we do our part. And God chooses to use us and our relationship with our Sunans to, to grow our Sunans. At the same time, of course, we know that spiritual growth doesn't happen without God being involved in the race. It's only through the Holy Spirit they get to really grow spiritually, right? And also, it is also the 100% responsibility of our Sunans. Okay? So, a lot of times, like, we, uh, I think Sunjangs put too much burden on, 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 on themselves. Right? But this is just like uh, successful witnessing. Can you guys define the meaning of the, the, uh, successful witnessing? One, two, three. Yeah, simply take the initiative to share Christ. I heard some Long Beach right there, man. Who's your, who's your Kansanim? Okay. I'm going to give her a Snickers bar. Okay, so, <laughs> um, simply to share Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit and leave the result to who? To God. And same thing. As a Sunjang, we're to simply take the initiative 
to share God's word and, and really love them and care for them in the power of the Holy Spirit and then leave the result to God. But God has also given us 100% responsibility, right, to be in part of that. Isn't that cool? That God invites us, that he, like, here's the thing. Like, we look at the character of God, and then we see how, like, God's plan to redeem the whole world was through discipleship. And to Jesus, it was really, really important, okay, that the, his 12 disciples, they went out and disciple others. And that is the last thing that he commands. And, and the, the, the times that he spent in, his, in the last days was to really help them to really get that right. Right? Because we see that in God's plans for the redeeming the world through reflect, um, uh, discipleship, it reflects who Jesus is. Because discipleship in, involves relationship. God is relational. And he is personal. And, 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 and therefore, like, discipleship really reflects. It's cool how he reflects who God is and how God chose to really raise up okay, uh, the disciple, raise up people from spiritual infancy to maturity in Christ was through relationship. Isn't that cool? Like Jesus could have like, used other, he didn't use other, he did preach to the masses, but like, and he also performed miracles, but there's, you know, performing miracles and it's for that time, but he, like Jesus knew, and because this is how we're created, the real influence, real impact, the real transformation happens through relationship. Through relationship with the people that we're discipling. Okay, so could we see the next slide? The goal of modeling. Okay, let's all read this together. Ready, go. Amen. And this is so important because the goal of modeling is that we need to example a spirit as a spirit-filled believer. Why? Why do we need to be spirit-filled uh, sunjangs? Because it's only when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit, we can reflect Christ's love and commitment for God and commitment for others. It's when we're filled with the Holy Spirit that, that we can really reflect that love you know, when we're meeting with our sunans, okay? And it is through the obe- like, obedience to God's word, okay? That it's, this is how we transfer our conviction to our sunans. Right? The, the, how we transfer our conviction and say, you know, that this is where you know, God is calling us to. That conviction comes from God's word and, the, this, and being actively involved with helping Grateful Commission is that, that we are on a mission together. We're helping them, helping our students to be on mission, right? The, through the convictions in the word. And, and knowing that, okay, the, the, the definition of uh, modeling. Let's look at the two principles of modeling. Let's, next slide. Who you are is often passed on to those you disciple. And this is the principle. This is the principle that God made from the beginning. If you look at Genesis, God appointed plants and animals to produce after their own kind. And God uh, designed a way in, in the lives of family. And we see that in the lives of family, they uh, produce their own kind, right? A lot of times, like, uh, you know, it's funny. A lot of times, like, you know, even the things that I told myself, like, when I grow up, when I become an adult, I'm never going to do this, what my dad did. And a lot of times, I'm, like, doing the same thing, <laughs> right? And it is because, like, who you are produce who you disciple, Okay, so number one, like usually produces like, and then number two, we reap what we sow. Okay, so it's funny, you know, a lot of times after Sunjang and Sunan, they do Sumoim and they like, uh, and spend a lot of time together over the years, and course of maybe two years uh, doing uh, discipleship. I look at the Sunan, and they sound like their Sunjang. Like, when they teach their follow-up material and like you know things like that, 
they're, they're using the similar illustration <laughs> that they heard, and they're like with the, the, with the same uh, conviction that, that we see. That. And it's funny, like, like we see how like you really, like you really began to produce who you are. And, and action speaks louder than words, and we have to really understand that. And, and here's, here's why. Could we see the next slide? You and I were called to be leaders to bring influence. Amen? But do you know where that starts, that influence? Actually, it starts with, again, relationship. Discipleship starts with relationship. Okay? And, and in that relationship, what happens is that integrity, as you live out integrity, there is trust built with your sunan to sunjang. Okay? It's not so much what the booklet that you go over. It's not so much like what you teach in your uh, uh, sumoim that's going to really influence them, but it's actually going to be you are producing you, someone like you. And in that relationship, like, the influence actually comes from integrity when that, through the relationship, that trust is built. And how is the integrity and trust built? It's when you are living a life of integrity through some of the things that you, you portray that is like keeping promise or being on time or communicating the things that you need to communicate on time. Being vulnerable. When you, be, when you are being vulnerable, like true to like where you're at with your sunan, right? These like as you live out like it, the, the life of integrity, it, it begins to build trust in the life of your sunan. And when you are built in the, through the relationship, the, the life of integrity and the trust is built, and you get to what? Have influence in their lives. And, and then, um, I think, here's the thing, okay? Um, and when we look at influence, and really seeing uh, growth in the, your disciples, it takes time. It takes time, right? It, it, takes, uh, it, it takes time to develop um, relationship and life of trust and then to uh, bear fruit. But guess what? We, in the life that we're called as Sunjai, we are to continually trust God in the journey that, that we're on in, in the life of discipleship. You know, I had a... Um, uh, so I, I, uh, he was my sunan too, but I, there was a sunjang in UCLA many, many years ago. And he, had a, he was a senior sunjang, and he, his sunan, he had his sunan, and he's like, kind of, yeah, one day like, he came to the sumo, and he said, Kazanim, man, and he was really just like really down. And this was like the last quarter, and I'm like, hey, aren't you excited to graduate? I was going, like, he was really down, and he said, Kazanim, man, like for the past two quarters, I really pour into my sunan, I really had, did this in faith, but I'm, I don't see any results. I feel like I failed. After I graduate, like what, what kind of legacy am I leaving behind? And I said, no, don't give up. Continually have faith. Sure enough, he graduated, and that Sunan, who wasn't really involved, and he, he wasn't really committed, after he graduates, and after the summer, the next year, the school year, guess what? He committed to become a Sunjan, and we got to really see him really grow as a man of God. And it is the really just kind of the, the seed that was planted, right? See that and even you know, for me, I, 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 I uh, knew uh, this, this sister that, you know, I, I guess I wasn't personally developing, I, I mean, discipling, right? But years down the line, I, I got a Facebook message saying, oh, you know, Kansanim, thank you so much for the years that you had, you know, that you, you guys have invested in my life. This was like, like three, four years after the graduation. Right? Like, what you're doing right now, right? The seeds that's been planted, God is working. And then we put our faith in what God is doing. Could we see the next slide? But one danger of modeling is this. Can we read this together? Ready, go.
Do you guys allow your sunans to see who you really are? And then you ask a question like, um, how, how are you guys doing? And then they ask you, right? Sunjang, uh, Sunjangnim, or I don't know what they call you. Uh, how are you doing? Oh, everything's good. I'm so like on top of things, and I'm like, I'm living like like Jesus Christ, and um, you know, like, how are you doing? How can I help? No, 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 no. One danger of modeling is that we perform instead of really letting them see who we really are. Okay, and the, the, that creates artificial pressure. Okay, within like like really performing in an unreal standard and perfectionism. Okay, and when they feel like that. Uh, when we don't share vul uh, vulnerability, right? When we, when we don't allow ourselves to really be known to our sunnahs, they themselves have a hard time opening up to us. Okay? So, it, it, as a real people, right? Amen? We're real people. Amen? That we're able to really share our shortcomings, be honest, admitting our failure, while still trusting in the Lord to overcome them. So here's why this is the you know, one thing that I uh, that I learned to share is like do this. This is how you can be vulnerable yet continually help our students to trust God. When they when you're going through hardship, when you're going through a difficulty, you you share. You say. Uh, like the past week or recently, I haven't really going through this hardship or difficulty or this this one I'm wrestling with, this one I'm struggled I'm going through. But through that, I'm learning to trust in God in these ways. So you're being vulnerable, you're sharing your struggle, but you're helping them to what? Put, put their trust in what? In God. Okay? In God. Can we see the next slide? Allow your disciples to observe your life. Invite them to be with, uh, with you to observe a specific area of your life. Spend time together in normal activities. I think one of the best ways you can have them observe your life is in how you spend time with God. Okay? How you, as you um, invite them into like, how you spend time with God, you're really helping them to really uh, connect with God and really grow in the relationship with God and also spend time in the normal activities like playing, like playing basketball together, uh, you know, really like having, uh, grabbing dinner together. I know that sisters, you, you guys like going shopping, going shopping together with your sunas. Like spend time together in normal activity because this is how they will examine you. This is how they will observe you in, in, in normal, everyday uh, experience, the daily routines that you go through, that they get to see you, how you trust in God, how you live your life. You know, uh, when I was um, uh, staff at UCLA, that was like, wow, that was like um, uh, 18 years ago, <laughs> 18 years ago, uh, many years ago, like uh, there was this one brother and he was like um, not very uh, committed, uh, committed brother. Uh, so I've been trying, I've been asking God like, oh man, how can I connect with him? How can I really, you know, like really get to know him and like um, involve him in, in, in growing as, uh, in, through the discipleship? And he loved basketball, right? And he, he was a Korean brother that actually really, one of the Korean brothers that can dunk. And he wasn't that much taller than me. So he could dunk and stuff like that. So I said, okay, I'm going to go play uh, basketball with him. So I made a time to go play basketball at Sunset, the UCLA. The, I, think, I don't know if the basketball courts are uh, still there. And then, you know, if you go to UCLA, you park your car in, in where the meters are in the street. Man, I don't know how they know. Like if you're like even like two minutes late, you get a ticket. Like I don't know how they know. So, and I got, you know, I, I got carried away playing with them, and then I, I saw the time, and I was like, like, five minutes late, I was like, oh, you know, I, I got to go, you know, go, um, the time's up, and I went, it was, I was like 10 minutes late, and sure enough, I had a ticket on my windshield, right, and that brother was, you know, he, he came with me, and because I told him I'll give him a ride back home to his apartment, and then he saw the ticket, and I grabbed the ticket, and I said, Oh, man. Oh, well, more donation to UCLA. <laughs> and then this brother, he's like, what the? That's it? 
that's all you're going to say? You're not going to cuss? <laughs> On their way, the drive back to the, the apartment, which was only like 15 minutes, he was like, man. He said like that, man, like about 10 times. <laughs> man, really? You're not pissed off? He was shocked the way I, I handled the ticket, right? Like, what can you do? I got a ticket. You got to pay for it, right? There's more charity to, to Bruins, right? So it's the moments like your tsunas in your daily life, they get to really see how you respond to getting a ticket, you know, or the hardship that you may face. This is the, 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 the as you go through the pressure, like, like they get to see, right? Right? Like, how you respond in a way, and this is like, without even knowing that we are modeling. Can you turn to the person next to you and I, you know, like, kind of think about like one specific area or activity you can invite your disciple to observe your life. So turn to the person next to you. Just share that really quick. Like next uh, rest of this semester or quarter, like. You want to go back home, and what's one area that you want to invite your disciple to observe? Like, you, you trying to get them into Sumoim, like, why aren't you coming in? Why aren't you going to get here? Like, you, like, threaten them, like, God's not going to like you if you don't come to No, like, meet them where they're at. They like basketball. Attempt to play basketball like I did, and um, build relationship. Okay? Can we see the next slide? So, building Excellence. Let's read this together, two things together, two sentences together. Ready, go. Amen. Amen. Okay. We should model excellence um, in our Sumoim, okay, in our discipleship, because we are doing this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has called us to make disciples. Okay? And we should model excellence because we're called to pursue conformity in Christ. That means, as a Sunjang, we're not called to be 10% better than our Sunan. We're not called to be 50% better than our Sunan. We're called to conform to Christ. It's not about being better, now oh, I'm this much better spiritually than my son. No. You're not comparing yourself to yourself. You're, 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 we're called to conform to Christ, imitate Christ as our uh, Sunans imitate us. And here's the thing. I want to challenge you guys to, and this is the prayer that I prayed when I was Sunjang, and our, um, all of our Sunjangs, uh, when I was college student, uh, like we prayed was that we pray for our Sunans to become better Sunjang than us. Amen? Pray that prayer. Pray for your Sunans to become better Sinjang than you. How are we going to change the world? It is when we produce even better Sinjang than ourselves and trust God for that. Okay? Good. And then uh, we're going to get into uh, components of discipleship in terms of, I like, guess, we're modeling the life of a uh, uh, Christian. Let's look at the components of Christian and then we'll kind of go over some practical tips and then we, we will close. Okay. Here are the components of discipleship, okay? It's building, relationship building. It's the word of God. It's the conviction that you bring in to your students and, and also inviting them to do ministry together. So here's kind of like the, what you will see in a, a general summoing, okay? If you have an hour summoing, generally you would probably spend 10 minutes, 15 minutes, what? Connecting. Sharing how they're doing, how they're doing that week. And then you will use like 35, 40 minutes to uh, go through the, the Word of God and you know, like follow up Agape, crew, crew.com, materials, uh, the, 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 the one that your campus is using. And also kind of, we have to kind of uh, gauge like where your students are at, but like basically like those things. And then, and then you will uh, spend a last, uh, now, 10 minutes, 15 minutes to uh, share a prayer request and then really invite them to actively uh, step out in faith that week. Right? What, like that, what can they do that week? 
to, to, in terms of like, you know, uh, stepping out in faith, even invite them to, uh, to, to do ministry together. So, Components of Discipleship, I, we have a short video that we're going to take a look at, and then I'll finish up here. Okay, so let's take a look. There's a crucial ingredient missing in a lot of discipleship relationships, but if left out, it will rob your discipleship of its true purpose. If you're anything like me, you've seen some things build as discipleship that just aren't very compelling, and it can leave you thinking that discipleship is a good thing, but kind of optional, certainly not very urgent or strategic. We can wonder why Jesus made such a big deal out of it if it's just reading a Christian book with a friend or studying a book of the Bible with another person or even getting coffee and offering some advice. If that's all that discipleship was, it would be odd that that's what Jesus spent his last moments on earth talking about with his disciples. But in fact, when he was with them in those moments, he said to them, Go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that I've commanded you. Apparently, discipleship was a really big deal to him. And one thing that can be missed, I think, when you look at that verse, is that God is calling every believer to be a disciple and to make disciples of others. I love the way this speaks to God's character because God is personal and relational. It just makes sense that his method of reaching all the nations is going to be personal and relational also. So discipleship involves our deep connection to Jesus as we own being a disciple of his and own our convictions. It also necessitates deep involvement with others as we pass those convictions on to them. Discipleship was always meant to be passed on. It was always meant to be passed on by people. So it's relationship and mission. Roger Hershey says that if you're doing the right things with your disciples, you're doing three things. You're building a relationship with them, you're renewing their minds with the word, and you're doing ministry together. So it's great to just take a moment and rate yourself on those three things. What's easiest for you? What's the hardest? Is there anything you need to do more of to strike a bit of a balance? What I find is that a lot of people have the hardest time when it comes to that third one, doing ministry together. But without that, can you really consider it discipleship? There is no biblical example of discipleship where they weren't going for the loss together. There's not a separate category where you get to follow Jesus but not be a part of taking his message to other people. So I hope that you will have the same heart as a friend of mine who said, discipleship started 2,000 years ago and it's not going to stop with me. Amen. Discipleship started 2,000 years ago and it's ongoing and it's not going to stop with us. And um, yeah, this could be the next slide. We're going to look at the three components. And then later in the small uh, group discussion, you guys get to rate how you're doing on these three components. Okay? First component is relationship building. Okay? And this is uh, as you're um, building relationship with your Sunan and your Sumoim, like learning to ask good questions. Okay? Because when you ask questions, it helps them to think. It had, and then not a like question like, oh, so uh, what did Apostle Paul do in this verse? But like, we want to get at their soul. We want to really connect with their heart, right? And, and what allows us to do that when is when we learn to ask good questions, okay? So actually, I uh, printed out these uh, six types of question. And this is actually, uh, I'm going to just... Um, Put it as a tool. I'm not, I don't think yeah, we have time to go over this. So just like use these questions okay, to really connect and help them to uh, build relationships, help them to really uh, um, get to their heart. Okay? Um, so we want Samoim to be where we are not sitting with our Sunans and telling them 10 things that they have to do, but really hearing from them. Okay? Sec uh, secondly, Learn to listen. Learn to listen. Okay. Could we see the next uh, next slide? Oh, yeah. That's the question. Next slide. Next slide. Okay. And this is that one. 
When you meet with your sunan, I think this was uh, probably mo most helpful when you first met your sunan in the beginning of the year. Kind of gauge where they're at spiritually. Okay? Are they, I guess, spiritually dead? Are they not believer? Okay? Are they spiritual infant? A spiritual infant, they're characterized by language and behavior of ignorance. Okay? And are they spiritual child? Language and behavior characterized by self-centeredness. Okay? And are they like uh, young adult? Uh, language and behavior characterized by service, God-centeredness, and other-centeredness. And then there's, uh, you know, I think mature, a mature believer is a parent and probably like, um, our, like these categories where our sunjang, we want our sunjangs to be, language and character, that are characterized by intentionally uh, producing uh, other people, okay, make, making disciples. Okay? So as you engage where they're at, okay, really think about, so for the person who is an unbeliever, yeah, it, for, uh, for our sunans, if they're unbeliever, we have to connect in a way that we're able to you know, share the gospel. And really pray. And I think one of the things that you guys wrote down in your uh, winner, uh, the Higher Calling Conference prayer, it, like really, if you, if you have someone that is uh, not a believer, yeah, like take that opportunity to invest in time of prayer and fasting for your sunan to receive Christ. And I was sh sharing this earlier, but... Um, in the past years, actually, at Gethsemane, we had everybody write down, all the Sunjangs write down 100 prayer requests in their prayer journal. Okay? And then we took that whatever two months that we had on, uh, uh, leading up to the higher calling, and then we, we, we had the HIP, we had the fasting chain, that, which is going to happen. Uh, fasting chain. We fasted, prayed, and, and got to the higher calling, and then really experiencing God and crying out to God, right? And for full assurance and faith. And then after uh, the higher calling, right, we asked, like, how was that, like, so many testimony of so many answered prayers that is checked off from the hundred prayer requests. If we don't write it down and really invest in prayer and really trust God and faith, we're not even going to know like these, how God actively participates you know, in answering our prayer. So, you know, like you, as you did it earlier, take those to heart, right? Take those to heart and I mean, I can share like thousands of stories how God answered prayer as they really fasted and prayed. And actually, uh, even actually someone in here in this room, I won't um, embarrass that person, but like her sister prayed at higher calling for her, to, for her salvation. And now, you know, she's, she's here. She's a believer. And I had like countless like parents, like they did these sometimes really praying for their parents, their, their, their prayer and actively participating in faith, right? And, and especially like your, your, um, your, your, the vision for your life, what God desires. Really, we are to like, like seek God for that, okay? So really pray for those if they're not uh, born again. If they're, uh, your sunan is a uh, spiritual infant, do a lot of sharing your life, like your, right, like your life testimony and how you've experienced God. Share the new truth in a way that they can understand, okay? And if they're a spiritual child, help them to really connect with God, okay? Help them to connect with God through connect them to the community as a whole in your, in your campus, in, in your movement. Help them to get to know other sunjangs. Help them to get to get involved in a in a community in your on your campus. Help them to expose them to more spirit filled um, uh, brother sister so that they can really see and observe. Okay, and also continually um, connect them to the purpose and vision that God has shared with you. Okay, and then if they're uh, young adult, uh, like. Yeah, Give an opportunity, provide ministry opportunities, and say, hey, can you, do you want to do this together? We have this event coming up. Do you want to get involved with the welcoming, or do you want to get involved with, like, design? Like, like we, we, like, that's a great way of connecting with them. Of course, if you're a spiritual parent, uh, we want them to grow as sunjangs. 
Next slide. I think that some of this we went over. Spend relational time together. Play pool, play the video game, um, go, go Daiso and do all that good stuff. And learn to be an encourager. Amen? Learn to be an encourager. We live in a fallen world with so much broken hope. And I think one of the, as a, as a believer, as a Christian, one thing that we hold on to is hope. Right? And, and this is where we find that joy. This is where we find our strength. And, and, and learning to be an encourager, like as you uh, have your Samoan, okay? And demonst uh, demonstrate vulnerability. You know the, the best Samoan I ever gave was to this brother. He was struggling, and he was struggling like over and over. And like, like I didn't have any words to tell him anymore what he needed to do. I sat down, looked him in the eye, and because I love this brother so much, and he broke my heart so much, I just teared up, and then I just began to, like, tears flowing down my eyes. In that one particular moment, I, like, I had no more words to say to him. My heart was so broken. I love him so much, and he was struggling so much. And I just, just tears flowing down my eyes. That was one of the best moments I ever gave. And after that, his heart added to really change. That he knew, right? I really, really loved him. And that I really am I'm praying for this brother, right? Like, like being vulnerable, right? That's, that's the um, that, that's component of relationship building. The second component, word of God. Okay? It's good to share. It's good to like just um, have a good time and giving good advice it's all good but you know what what really change what's going to really change our sunan is the word of god there's power in word of god amen and it's not in our words it is the word itself okay it is live it's like double edged sword right it, it really builds up it rebukes and it really uh, produces life okay so Second component, I think we have to understand that like, really building relationship is important, but the Word of God it is really important that they are transformed through the Word of God. So God's Word really uh, builds conviction for a lifetime. We want to really help them to do that, and God's Word is simply the truth. Okay? Everyone has a belief system. Okay? That can only be uh, replaced and transformed through the truth in the Word of God, especially if your sunan has been emotionally or physically abused in their childhood. That, that can, what can really, really transform their mind is it, it's, it's the Word of God. It, it's through the truth. Okay? And that we want to really um, share the Word of God. Okay? So, brothers and sisters, when you have Sumoim, don't spend like 40 minutes talking about what you did at Daiso. Relational building, very important, but we need to go into the Word. Okay? Go into the Word. Okay? This is why we use um, follow material, agape, crew.com. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm experimenting with the... Uh, Another crew material. It's been, you know, uh, pretty good. But the important thing is that it's the word of God that we are sharing. Okay. And here's the thing: Why do we use follow up agape? Okay. I think Jenny Gansanim already shared this in the beginning. But you know, like with your sunon, how many sumoim do you get to have go through um, the 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 curriculum together? In in a quarter system, like if you go through the first quarter six follow up. You've done a good job. Because it probably takes one, two weeks to just get the schedule. And then there are times that, yeah, you, you, you just like spend a lot of time just sharing life. Right? And I, I did that past week with Joe. That was, that was really good. Just like we just sat there. I kicked my feet out on the table. And it just like, just share life. Right? There's going to be times that you need that. Right? But the, but the, you know, the sixth booklet follow-up that you'll go through in 10 weeks if you're a quarter school system. And if you 
do that, but times that by three quarter, that's what? What is that? Six, six times three. Eighteen. Eighteen meetings you have with them for the whole year. What we want to do, what follow-up agape material is, is, to, is the essential or the uh, foundation of Christianity that we want to, what? Transfer. It is a transfer concept so that they are able to, what? Receive it so that they are able to transfer that to their sunans. This is our goal as a disciple. These are transfer uh, concepts. These are the truth, the foundation of truth. Um, like love, God's love and forgiveness, prayer, right? Uh, uh, how to do QT and like all, like we, these are so that you can like transfer that. So that even after you graduate, even after your Sunan graduates, they have that transfer concept to what? To make disciples. We're not a seminary. Sun movement is not a seminary. Yeah, we, 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 we are Biblically sound, that we, I'm not saying we're like, you know, like, but, and a lot of the follow-up, actually, very theology, I went to Talbot, studied uh, five semesters of Greek. It almost killed my life. Okay? That was just, oh my God, this is where I think I got my white hair. I come back, and I realize how sound, biblically, theologic sound, the follow-ups and agape are, getting to the core of what everybody needs to transfer to their... Um, so this is why we use this material, okay? So um, that's the component, the Word of God, okay? And lastly, third component is doing ministry together, okay? Because we want to invite our sunans to do ministry together because when you do ministry together, it gives them a view, that their view of God, it develops, where they can say, Wow, this is actually fun, and actually I can do this. I remember, like, my life, like, like besides my parents, one person that influenced, impacted my life most was my Sunjang. He's the one who said, "Young, yeah, let's go out witnessing together." I was like, what me? Sh- like, share the gospel, and he t- he said, "No, just observe. Just you don't have to do anything. Just come and watch watch me do it." And he shared the gospel. He, he, like, I was like, wow, you know, this doable on campus. I remember one time, like, like he said, hey, come over for some uh, brugogi dogbap, right? And said, to his house. I said, okay. I came over. He fed me brugogi dogbap. It was good. And he said, let's go to basement and pray. I was like, what the, right? Like, so, <laughs> and it was like dark down there. <laughs> I went down there. And as soon as we got to the basement, like, he got on his knees. He goes, young. Let's get on our knees and pray. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> and he said, Chai! he started like praying, like praying for revival of campus. Like, you know, he said, Chai! I started praying and we were, like, for the revival campus. And we pray for like our sunnah. They're like, like, he was like, I think it's under five feet. <laughs> But we call him uh, we call him uh, spiritual giant. He's a pastor now in um, Chino Hills, but um, he really like not only taught me. Actually, I don't remember like what we learned through Sumoim, but through his life, I learned what it means to be a Sunjang. I I learned what it means to have like like passion for God. I learned what it means to really love the Sunan. You know? And it, it is through, it was through the, and through his life. Right? And, and doing ministry together, inviting them. Our confidence, God, will use us it will grow and compassion to develop for the loss will, will develop. How many of you guys want to really learn to love the loss? How many of you guys? Everybody, right? But that love would not happen unless you actually go out and share the gospel and at times get rejected. Get rejected. And have times to reflect back to God and wrestle with God. You know, one time, oh man, I keep saying UCLA, but a lot of things happened in UCLA, I guess, in my life as I look back. It's like one time I went and I, I saw this like nice looking sister, nice looking girl, right? And she's sitting there having her lunch. I said, oh, I know. 
share the gospel to her for a special law. And I said, excuse me, uh, do you have a nice, cute-looking you know, sister, right? Hey, um, do you have the five minutes I want to share you know, this uh, gospel track with you? She said, sure, go ahead, right? And then, uh, and I, but like, when I read, oh, actually, I didn't say gospel. Can I share this booklet with you? And she goes, yeah, sure, go ahead. And I said, God loves you. has a wonderful plan for your life. The first, like, he, she realized this was a Christianity thing, right? She, she said, did Gandhi go to hell? I was like, what? Did Gandhi go to hell? Right? <laughs> I was like, oh, if um, he didn't put his trust in Jesus as a Savior and Lord, I'm sorry, but I, I have to say yes. And then she got up and she, she cut me out. Right? And she said, if Gandhi went to hell, I want to go there too. And she just walked off. <laughs> and she like cussed me out and then... Oh my goodness, my test was like, you know, my, my faith was tested. Like, I, I was like up to here to like say, then go to hell, right? I just like, <laughs> see you in hell, right? Like, how dare you, right? Like, I was like, like, like up to here, I was like, oh, I was like, oh no, 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 I, that, that, what am I doing here? I'm, I'm witnessing, I'm, right? And that really, really upset me that day. And I got home and I was like wrestling with the God, like, like, man, that was messed up, you know? Like, God, like, I'm so angry, God. And then God took me to that place where actually, I think it was John and Andrew, he said, went to this town, and then because, like, everybody in that town was rejecting Jesus. You know what they said? God, should we bring down the fire from heaven and burn these people, God? Jesus, should we do that? Like, we, like you have power to do that, right? I can just see their excitement, right? Jesus, bring down the fire, burn these people, make them go to hell, right? And I can just see Jesus doing this. Oh. John and Andrew, you still don't get it. It's because of these people I came down from heaven. And that's what Jesus said. I was like, oh my. That day I repented. I committed my life to loving even those who cussed me out during the witnessing. Because you know why? Jesus died for them. Jesus loves them. Compassion developed for the lost, I think it only happens when you go out and share the truth, share life through the gospel. Amen? And guys, like, it's okay to get rejected. That's what Paul said. It's God, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting who? The Lord. And if you're persecuted, greater are your reward. Okay? And ministry builds vision and passion for their lives. So, he, um, I'm going to take a moment to pray for us. And then th these are the discussion questions that we want you to um, share with one another as we close. And we're going to just close with discussion question, and, and you're free to go, okay? So uh, we're not going to meet back, but we're going to really um, ask the Lord to process this and go uh, back to our homes and make disciples by modeling in a way that we really shows our students that we are followers of Jesus Christ. Okay? Can we just join hands with the brother sister next to us? Can we take this time to pray? Okay. That will become of Sunjang, who are spirit-filled, reflecting Christ's love and commitment to God, who is obedient to the Word, so that whenever we have someone, we can really share with conviction through the Word, and that we become Sunjangs that will really help them to grow their heart for the mission that God has for them to help fulfill the Great Commission.
Okay. Let us really pray and also pray for the person, the brother, sister next to you, that God will really anoint them. Anoint them as Sunjangs to really bring about revival you know, on their campuses and that it will start with relationship with their Sunans and fellow Sunjangs, that they will truly be anointed in God to really model the life of Christ. Okay, let's take this time to bless one another and really pray for ourselves. And I'll close. Okay, let's pray.